Chesterfield brings you Dragnet. Put a smile in your smoking. By Chesterfield. Smoother. Cooler. Best for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. You get a call from an officer in another division. He's come across some information about a robbery. Your job? Check it out. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. It's today's biggest cigarette news. Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. The Accuray controller is the greatest improvement in cigarette making in years. And it's a Chesterfield exclusive. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. So buy Chesterfield today. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. A perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes smoother. From the first puff to the last puff, your Chesterfield smokes cooler. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Dragnet. The documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, May 18th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith, the boss of Chief of Detective Stad Brown. My name's Friday. We were on our way down from the office, and it was 10.47 a.m. when we got to the R&I counter. Coke machine. I don't see him. No? It's quite a gadget, huh, Joe? What? A machine here. Real piece of work. Sure is. Here you are. Thank you. You stop and figure, Joe, all the wires in there, levers. Must be a couple hundred wheels. Yeah. Johnny say why he wanted to see us? Mm-mm. Yes, sir, there must be four or five miles of wire in that thing. Yeah, at least. Mm-hmm. Why do you think he did it, Joe? What? Invent the machine. I don't know, maybe he just liked to invent things. No, I don't think that's it. What's your idea? Well, a guy'd have to spend a lot of time to build something like this. Maybe a couple of years. Yeah. Figure now a person just has to step up, put a coin in, cup drops down, syrup pours in, seltzer, the way it's all measured out. Yeah, a guy'd have to spend a lot of time on that. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Gotta be a good reason for thinking it up. Well, what's your idea? I don't think you could find a bottle opener. Yeah, sure. Joe? Frank. Hi, John. Oh, hi, John. Sorry I'm late. I got a call on my way out. No trouble. What do you got? Picked up a kid day before yesterday, carrying a can full of grass. Mm-hmm. Pretty rough kid when we tagged him. Wouldn't give us a time of day. How old is he? 17, just under the line. Uh-huh. We got to talking to him last night, started to relax. Guess he knew he was in trouble. Yeah. One thing led to another, and the kid ended up talking pretty good. Uh, what did he give you? Rumble about his brother. Got big plans. Yeah. And a knock over a loan company. Captain Powers, Frank, and I left the city hall, drove over to Georgia Street Juvenile. We had the suspect brought to one of the interview rooms. All right, sit down, Homer. Homer, this is Sergeant Friday and Officer Smith. They want to talk to you. Joe, Frank, this is Homer Rankin. How are you? Hi, Sam. What do you want? Well, I told them what you said about your brother, Homer. They'd like to go over it with you. That's a lousy deal. What do you mean by that, son? Stinks, that's what I mean. What I told you wasn't supposed to be broadcast. I'm just trying to help you out, kid. Yeah, where's your shovel? 
Word leaks I turn Fink and the services will be real nice. You're all invited. Look, boy, you're not going to help yourself by acting like this, and you're not going to do your brother any good either. You tell me all about it, huh? Well, what are you trying to build, Homer? What do you want? Ah, leave me alone. We can't do that. You know it. Try. Look, Homer, you're in trouble. Why make it any worse, huh? You got me for possession, that's all. You ain't gonna make any more out of it. All right, let's go. Come on, kid. Where to now? The basement for the rubber hose, huh? Going back to your cell. Good. I didn't sleep good last night. Maybe I can get some sack time. You better do it while you can. What's that supposed to mean? By the time the court gets through with you, you're not gonna feel like sleeping, I'm afraid. What do you do? Hmm? Where do you work? What's your job around here? Robbery. Big guys, huh? No. Sure, I heard about you fellas. Big time operators. Guess I should feel pretty good you come to see me. How do you figure that? Uh, you don't waste your time on small time stuff. Well, you better take another look. Huh? We did this morning. We sent back to Captain Power's office and got the name and address of the subject's brother. 12.10 p.m. We drove back to the city hall and had the name checked through R&I. Here we are. Thanks, Helen. That's a fat package. Well, let's see the arrest report. It's long. Mm -hmm. Soft, burglary, 211. Yeah, he's been busy. Yeah. You got a 5 2 there? There it is. Who's he listed the next to Ken? White, Paula Rankin, 101st Street address. Better talk to him. No. You think the kid told Powers the truth? I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to sound big. That's possible. Brother sure fits, though. Mm-hmm. Guy's been lucky. What do you mean? Well, all the arrests, he's never stood a conviction. Well, let's see if we can change that. We got a copy of the suspect's mug shot, and we went out to see his wife. She lived in one of the new housing projects on the south side of the city. Yeah? Ms. Rankin? That's right. Police officers, we'd like to talk to you. Well, I don't know anything about the marijuana. Kid got it someplace. It's his problem. I got enough of my own. We'd like to talk to you about your husband. Tim? That's right. Come on in. Thank you. Want to sit down? Thanks. This is my partner, Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Yeah. Now, what's the beef about Tim? Is he here? No. You know where he is? No, I don't. When did you see him last? A couple of days ago. Is he out of town? I don't know. Couldn't care any less. Do you have any idea where we can get in touch with him? Listen, mister, if I knew you'd have it, I got nothing to save him from. As far as I'm concerned, he can boil. Is that so? Yeah. Since the day I met him, I've been carrying the economy size of trouble. Week goes by and he ain't pinched. It's a cause to get arrested for shooting off skyrockets. Mm. Always something. I'm tired of it. And I'm through with him. Never see him again. I ain't gonna cry about it. You got any other relatives in town? Mm, just the J.D. Ma'am? The kid, Homer. It's the only one. Boy lives here, is that right? He's got a bed. Don't use it much, like his brother. All the time out trying to get himself hung up. Never seen such a trouble family. Mm -hmm. Any place your husband might go? I told you before, if there is, I don't know about it. Does he have a job? Tim? Yes, ma'am. Honey, if, if you got paid for goofing, Tim could retire. Only thing wrong is he ain't got nothing to retire from. He doesn't have a job. Then. That's the general idea, yeah. Well, where's he spend his time? Ain't around here. Well, where, do you know? I don't know. Guess it'd be the hot dog stand. A couple of times when I needed some money, I caught up with him there. Where is the place? Down on 114th, a couple of blocks over. You can't miss it. One of those all-night places. Mm -hmm. Your husband have any close friends? Mm, what do you mean, close? Well, people he'd spend time with. Yeah, a couple of guys fit that. You know their names? No. You ever seen them? Yeah. One of them was here once. I saw him. Can you give us a name? No, I don't remember. Me and Tim had a beef about it. I came home and found him and this bum crocked on beer, had a beef about it, and ended up with both of them leaving. Can you describe the man for us? He's a man. Got a head, two arms, two legs. That's all you can tell us? Yeah. All right. Thanks for the time. Don't worry about it. It's free. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you a card. If you hear from your husband, we'd appreciate a call. Sure. Well, don't hold your breath. Isn't likely he'll come back this time. All right. Can you tell me what it's about? It's a police matter. It'd be better if we talked to him personally. <laughs> Can I get you anything? Drink, maybe? No, thanks. No, thanks. Too bad. Sometime when you're in the neighborhood, you know, not working, drop in and I'll pour you a drink. Yeah, sure. No, I mean it. Girl gets lonely just sitting by herself. Well, the company'd be nice. Mm-hmm. You're not married, are you? No, ma'am. That's nice. 
You drop by now. Anytime. You bet. Thanks again. Goodbye, Miss Rankin. Bye. Hey, Joe. Just do me a favor, will you? Well, sure, old buddy. What is it? Be quiet. We checked with the neighbors, and they verified Ms. Rankin's story about her husband's absence. None of them were able to tell us where he might have gone. Other than saying that the Rankins fought constantly, they were not able to give us any new information. 2.15 p.m. We drove down to the hot dog stand on 114th. There was no one at the counter who looked like the suspect, Tim Rankin. Yeah, will it be? Cup of coffee. Okay, how about you? Mm, number six, I guess. You make that with cheddar cheese? Yeah. Okay, I'll have one of those. Glass of milk, too, huh? Sure. You want your coffee now? Please. Hot. That's good. That's the way we like it. No, uh, not the coffee, the sun. Oh, yeah. And paper says there's 91 Pacific Center. Uh-huh. Yeah, we should be doing more business than we are. Don't understand it, though. Is that right? Hey, you know, cold drinks. Hot day people all the time drinking something cold. Yeah. No offense. Well, that's all right. Malamute will be ready right away. Huh? That's what the number six is, Malamute. Oh. You seen Tim Rankin around this morning? Uh... Yeah, he was in about 10. You guys friends of his? We'd like to talk to him. He came in, had a cup of coffee with Shelly. Two of them left, oh, I guess about 10.30. Who was he with, you know? Shelly, you know, Shelly Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Big buddies all the time together. You know where they went? No, uh, I don't know, maybe over Shelly's. Does he live around here? Yeah, he's got a pad a couple blocks over. Mm -hmm. Hey, your dog that'll be ready. You know the address of that place? Mm-mm. I've never been there. Heard the two of them talk about it, though. This guy Mitchell work? No, I don't think either one of them do. Mm-hmm. Want to leave your names? Guys come back, I'll tell them you're here. Well, it'd be better if you didn't say anything about it. Why not? We're police officers. Both of you? That's right. <laughs> sure never guessed it. Mm-hmm. Cops. You never would have known. You look just like anybody else. Mm-hmm. What are you after Tim and Shelly for? I bet it's a loan company job, huh? Huh? Is that it? What do you know about it? Oh, look, mister, I, I didn't have any part in the action. I, I just heard them talking. Is that so? Yeah, oh, gospel. I didn't even think they were serious. If, uh, if I'd have known they meant it, I'd have called the cops myself. I don't want to get mixed up in nothing like that. Not me. I, I ain't about to put my neck out. Well, what'd they say about the job? Oh, just they're going to pull it. All the time I thought they were kidding, talking big. I, I sure never figured they'd really do it. What's the name of the company? Huh? That place they talked about, what's the name of it? Uh, Timely Loan Company over on Western. They say when they were going to make it? I talked about Monday afternoon. I guess they decided not to wait, though, huh? Yeah. Either one of them drive a car, do you know? Yeah, Shelly does. I don't think it's his, though. You ever seen it? Yeah, a couple times he's had it there. What kind of a car is it? Uh, Pontiac, four-door. Yeah. Happen to know the license number? <laughs> no, sorry, fellas. Never paid much attention to it. Either one of them say when they'd be back? No, it could be any time. Oh, they come and go. You know if this Mitchell's ever been arrested? I can't give you an answer. Never heard him talk about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, when they hit the place? What? When they robbed the loan company. I never read nothing about it. Papers haven't got it yet. Well, anybody hurt? Why do you ask that? Well, it just kind of figures, that's all. Yeah? Sure, I know one thing for sure. I don't want to get in Shelley's way. The leg don't slow him down a bit. What do you mean? He's got a wooden leg, you know. Here, the right one. Told me once he got wounded in the war. Is that right? He still walks with a little limp, like this. Mm -hmm. I saw him tangled with a guy once, happened in the alley out and back. Yeah? He almost knocked the fella's head right off his shoulders. Real punch. Is that right? Yeah, that's why I asked if anybody had been hurt, Shelly being like he is. Yeah. Of course, I guess he wouldn't hit anybody, be no need for it. What do you mean? Well, he just wouldn't have to, that's all. Yeah. And both of them got guns. Frank and I arranged for a steak out on the hot dog stand, then we went back to City Hall and ran the name Shelly Mitchell and his description through r and I. We came up with a possible that looked good. The mug shot was pulled and shown to the owner of the hot dog stand. He gave a positive identification. We contacted Army authorities and requested what information they could give us. Yes, sir, huh? When was it? I see. You have those numbers? Right. No, I have them. All right, Lieutenant, thanks again. Friday. Michigan 5211. Extension 2511. No, it's two five. Right? Okay, many thanks. 
How about it, Joe? Looks good. He was given a dishonorable discharge. For what? Theft. Spent a couple of months in the stockade, and then the Army kicked him out. Yeah? They'd like to talk to him again, though. Well, how come? Well, according to the lieutenant, it seems after he left, they got to check, and he didn't leave alone. What do you mean? Took three forty-five automatics with him. An immediate check was made at the last place listed in Mitchell's package, but he'd moved and left no forwarding address. Additional officers began to canvass the area where he was supposed to be living. Local broadcasts and APBs were gotten out on both suspects, and a stakeout was set up on Tim Rankin's home. That afternoon, we met with Captain Donahoe, and it was decided to put a stake out on the loan company. 4.50 p.m. Frank and I were leaving the office to make the necessary arrangements. You got the mugs? Yeah, we better get on it right away. Yeah. Hot shot. We missed it. Huh? Timely loan company. Yeah. Was just held up. <laughs> a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember this. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking. Instantly, you'll smile your approval of Chesterfield's smoothness. So smooth, so satisfying. You want them mild. We make them mild. Mild and mellow. With the smooth and refreshing taste of the right combination of the world's best tobaccos. So next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Start smoking with a smile with Chesterfield. Smiling all the while with Chesterfield. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Frank and I left the office and drove out to the Timely Loan Company on Western Avenue. By the time we got there, a radio card answered the call and the officers were checking the neighborhood. A broadcast had already been gotten out carrying their description. Frank and I talked with a manager, a Mr. Richard Conover. Is there anything we can do for you, sir? No. Why don't you take a look at some pictures and see if you can recognize the holdup man? I have to. Well, it'll help us. All right. Here they are, sir. No, they're not here. You sure? I looked at him. You haven't got a picture. Would you mind going through them again? I'll be honest with you. I'd like to see you get the two men, but the money's insured. I'm not going to put my family on the block for it. I don't think I understand. It's just that I believe him, that's all. What do you mean? On the way out, they told me. Said if I helped the police, they'd find out and make me sorry for it. Yeah. Said they'd get my family. <laughs> We went over the description Conover had given the uniform men. It could have fit almost anyone. The crime lab came out and went over the offices of the loan company. They found nothing that would aid us. The people in the immediate vicinity were interviewed. None of them were able to give us a good description of the suspects. The victim, Richard Conover, was taken to the city hall where Frank and I talked to him for over an hour. 8.14 p.m. Now, Mr. Conover, we need your help. If we don't have it, our job's gonna be five times as hard. I've told you I'm not gonna put my family in jeopardy. Well, now, look, we'll put a policeman in your house. He'll be there 24 hours a day until we come up with the thieves. There'll be an officer with your children. Nobody's going to get near him. That's ridiculous. What do you mean? I'm not going to subject them to that kind of supervision. Well, then maybe you better take another look, Mr. Conover. There are two men in this city who've held you up, and they've made threats on your life. Now, we don't blame you for being concerned, but this isn't going to help. Unless you go along with us, our hands are tied. There isn't anything we can do. Now, you've got no reason to believe that these men aren't going to try to get at you, even if you don't talk. You're the only one who can't identify them. Pretty soon they're going to think about that, and then we won't be able to stop them. And you and your family are in trouble now, whether you talk to us or not. All right, I'll tell you. The suspects were positively identified as Timothy Rankin and Shelley Mitchell. Additional bulletins were gotten out on the two men, and the search for them was intensified. Officers were dispatched to Conover's home in the event that the two thieves tried to make good their threat. Rankin's brother was requestioned at Georgia Street Juvenile, but either he couldn't or else he wouldn't aid us in apprehending the suspect. 11.30 that night, Frank and I were ready to leave the office. You signed the log, Joe? Yeah, let's go. I'll get it. Robbery, Friday. 
Hello? Robbery Friday. Oh, yeah, Benson. Wait a minute. Give me that again, will you? You're right out. Benson and Stromo. Yeah? They found the suspects. In canvassing the area around the hot dog stand, officers Benson, Stromwall, and Herman had checked a hotel. When the clerk was shown pictures of the suspects, he said the two men who looked like the pictures were staying in the place. However, when the rooms were checked at the suggestion of the manager, Rankin and Mitchell were not there. They staked out the room and we were called. When Frank and I arrived, we took up our positions in the room while the other officers covered the entrances to the hotel. 4.15 a.m. We waited. What time you got? Wait a minute. Kind of hard to see without a light. 4.30. Hmm. Well, the hats did a good job. Yeah, like finding a needle. Mm-hmm. You heard how Herman's coming with the books? I was talking to him the other day. Said he didn't think he's ever going to make a lawyer. Well, I guess it's rough with the hours he's got. Yeah, it works out, though. What do you mean? He told me that when he and Stromwell got a stake out together, they'd ask each other questions, you know, try to study that way. Oh, man, that's a hard way to do it. Yeah. Right. Hmm? Yeah. All right, Mr. Holder, right there. I'm doing like you say. I'm not going to cause no trouble. Turn around. Face the wall. Yes, sir. Just like Come you on, say. Come on, move. Hands up on the wall. Yes, sir. I'm doing it. Just like you said. I'm not rough. Oh, here you are, Joe. Where'd you get this gun, Rankin? Well, Shelly gave it to me. That's the truth. Honest, mister. I got it from Shelly. All right. Put your hands behind you. Yes, sir. Right behind me. All right. You can turn around, huh? Now, don't shoot, mister. Huh? Please don't shoot. Turn around. Yes, sir. Where's Mitchell? I don't know. Oh, come off it. Now, where is he? Well, I don't know, mister. That's the truth. I just don't know. Yeah. Well, look, if I did, I'd tell you honest I would. When'd you see him last? A couple hours ago. Where? A coffee place on Vermont, sir. Is he still there? I don't know. What was he doing? Well, he was talking to another fella. Who? A guy named Randolph Bennett, sir. I'm not sure that's his real name, though. Is he coming back? No, sir. He doesn't live here. The clerk says he does. Well, who are you talking about? Mitchell. Oh, I meant Bennett. He doesn't live here. Mitchell does, but Bennett doesn't. Mm -hmm. Now, how about an answer? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Mitchell, is he coming back? Well, I don't think so. Why do you say that? Well, we had a fight. I don't think he'll be back, sir. What'd you fight about? Well, it's something he wanted me to do. I didn't want any part of it. What was it? Well, he said if I didn't go along with him and Bennett, they'd kill me, and I didn't like the deal. What deal? Well, him and Bennett, they got a caper planned. I was supposed to go with them, but I didn't want to, sir. Honest, that's the truth. I really didn't want to. Yeah. You see, I was supposed to steal a car for him to use, and the more I thought about it, I didn't want to get in any more trouble than I am now. The two of you hit the loan company this afternoon? Yeah, that's right, sir. This fellow Bennett, he was with you? No, sir. We met him tonight. Him and Shelley planned this other deal. They wanted me to go with him, but I didn't want to. Honest, that's the God's truth, sir. I didn't want to. That's why we had this fight. Well, what's the deal? Well, they figure to start out about 9 in the morning. Shelley's got it all figured. They say they can hit about eight places and the two of them are going to leave town. What are you talking about? Well, this deal, they're going to rob some loan companies. Well, what about this fellow Bennett? You know him? No, sir. He's a friend of Shelley's. They've known each other, though, for a long time. Where's he from? Oh, back east someplace. I'm not sure where. I just know the cops are after him, though. Why? Well, he broke out of jail while he was waiting to be tried. What was the charge? Kidnapping and murder. <laughs> We left the hotel room and picked up the other officers. We had Tim Rankin point out the coffee stand where he'd last seen Shelley Mitchell, and then we called a radio car and turned Rankin over to the uniformed men. While Benson, Stromwall, and Herman covered the rear entrance of the place, Frank and I went in the front door. There they are, Joe, halfway down. Yeah, let's go. Oh, I should have known. Those guys always talk big when it comes to doing something back down. A lot of front kids are only kids. Uh, we don't have to take... Yeah? You guys got a license to listen? Shelly Mitchell. Lousy cops. Lousy rotten cops. Turn around. Oh. Give me your cops, will you, Joe? Here. Come on, turn around. I'll take care of Ben. All right, Mitchell, turn around. All the stick of deals. All right, come on, move. How'd you get to me? Don't you worry about that. Rottenest, lousiest deal I ever heard of. Where'd you get this gun? I bought it. From the government, huh? Well, that's none of your business. All right, we'll go your way. Lousy 12 hours. 12 more hours, you'd have missed us. This afternoon, we'd have been on the way. You'd have never found us. Yeah, you really believe that, don't you? Oh, sure. 
If we'd have gotten a start, you'd have been dead. Looking all around, never found us. Yeah, just like now. <laughs> The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On September 16th, trial was held in Department 92, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. I know Chesterfields will do for you what they always do for me. Put a smile in your smoking. It's the best cigarette made for my money. Smooth, satisfying, mild, and mellow. In the whole wide world, no cigarette satisfies like Chesterfield. Try them. They'll satisfy you. Homer Norman Rankin was referred to juvenile court and after a hearing was made a ward of the state. Timothy Alfred Rankin and Shelley Vincent Mitchell were tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree, one count. They received sentence as prescribed by law. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. Randolph Bennett, alias James Virgil Nicholson, was held for New Jersey authorities to answer charges of murder, kidnapping, and escape. America needs volunteers for the Civilian Ground Observer Corps. Let's face facts. The H-bomb and the long-range bomber have made intercontinental war possible, and hostile planes could penetrate our radar defenses unnoticed by flying between the radar cones at low altitudes. Civilian spotters are needed to fill these radar gaps, particularly on the east and west coasts and in northern state areas. If you're from teenage up, your country needs a few hours of your services each week for this vital work. To volunteer, get in touch with your local civil defense center. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Frazier. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Virginia Gregg, Herb Ellis, Jack Crucian. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. This is it, l and filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. l and has got everything. It's the best. Notice the color of L&M's Miracle Tip. It's white, pure white, to give you the purest and best filter. And L&M gives you a rich, good-tasting, fully satisfying smoke, the kind you can get only from highest quality tobaccos. Buy L&M. It's got everything. Flavor, taste, mildness, and the best filter. L&M. Mr. Citizen This Week stars Paul Lucas in a true story of persecution and tyranny in wartime Holland. Check your local TV listings for Mr. Citizen. Hear Dragnet next week, same time, same station. Lux Radio Theater presents Walter Pidgeon in Edward, My Son, tonight on the NBC Radio Network.